I thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, everyone's on the rogue boat here. Um, uh, I don't know how much reason. I trust Johnny. <laughs> I mean, four and six is not positive, which it no. took him a little bit to figure it out there no, at the beginning. Yeah. But Swedish math, definitely a lot different, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not good at math yeah. either, so this is some shocking stuff. Uh, but the next map will be Volskaya. You heard the guys on the desk talk about uh, Renegade struggles with it last week. You know, they, they just had a little bit of a brain fart. You get a bunch of ults. You don't get near the point. Obviously not ideal, not what they plan to do. Uh, Rogue actually, you know, they get uh, stalled out. You know, they get stopped in their game. So what happened uh, when Rogue played this map is they ran the Diva at the beginning with Nico. They were able to take the first point right away. They had like six or seven minutes, like a lot of time. Yeah. They immediately switched Nico off to the Genji. They tried the triple DPS. They were never actually able to get point B. So I think you have to see adjustments from both sides, right? What do we see from Mangachu? They talked about it. Junkrat, a whole bunch of different co combinations of heroes he can play. Throw a wrench in the game plan of Rogue. And then on the side of Rogue, do you take the first point with you know, the 2-2-2 two, 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 and then you change? Or do you kind of uh, stay with something more uh, you know, consistent? You know, something a bit more, I guess, what do you call it? Meta-friendly, where you kind of have yeah. you know, the D.Va in play. But looks like Rogue will be starting out on defense first here. Unko running the Sombra. And here, so you're going to see the changeup for the first time. So usually it's been Nico who's been running the D.Va for Rogue. Now it'll be AKM. So Nico will be running the Genji here on defense. Just one of the things, man, it's like Rogue doesn't have... I, I, I don't want to be mean here, but, you know, uh, I'm sure Mani's just telling me in the back, be mean, be mean. They just don't have a D.Va. Like, they don't have a competent D.Va. And, and I just feel like that really hurts them a lot. I think... Okay, so I think their D.Va play is, like, not, like, really bad, right? But I just don't think they have anybody who wants to play D.Va. Like, AKM wants yeah. to play Soldier. He wants to play McCree. Like, Nico really Maybe wants to play... Maybe that's more so what it is, too. Yeah, he you wants to I mean? play Genji. No one Genji. wants to commit to the character, uh, which I get, you know? Uh, no one wants to just, you know, defense <laughs> Matrix the entire time. Uh, I'm sure that they're excited for the new patch as well. But we also got to talk about this Sombra uh, for Rogue here on the defense. Well, and then you're also going to see one on offense here for Renegades as well. So Sherlocky will put away you know, the Zenyatta on. He'll go over to the Sombra. We're trying to maybe you know open things up with an EMP for team. As you see, the position for Renegades, they're going to go all the way towards this backside. They're going to control this Mega Health Pack all the way in the back. As, uh, you know, Rogue on the defensive end, they have control of the you know, Mega Health Pack right by the point. So. See, uh, you know, the positioning coming in from Renegades, they have this area under lockdown. It's just how are they going to play out of this position here? That is some great resource management from Sherlocky, just ensuring that they have full control of the health. Uh, their Sombra, I'm actually kind of shocked that they didn't try and go for the same thing there, but now they're going to have uh, EMP in just a second. Well, it's interesting. It's like Renegades has pushed all the way through, and now they kind of control this high ground, right? But they have nobody who can do anything from the high ground. They have the EMP now, so you'll lead the way with that as Sherlocky connects wow. with a few members from Rogue. And that was so well-timed. They wanted to make sure that they got as much value as they possibly could out of that EMP, and now it's going to be all Renegades here. They're going to go on the attack. Nico's going to get hacked, and that will be the Genji having to take a seat for the time being there and it's going to be renegades who managed to secure themselves firm control of the point and honestly that was very well done by renegades yeah now renegades able to farm their emp faster at the beginning and they're staggering the, the the diva as well that's come on you gotta love it yeah then they'll be able to take that first point now we'll see they go with a fast attack i mean they do have a sound barrier they're gonna have a meteor strike and pulse bomb as well see a pulse bomb come in there as Zachary is taken out there by soon so it's a big pulse bomb there because you saw Renegades they probably would have went in faster you had you know the diva from Rogue AKM down at the beginning of that fight but they're gonna have to back all the way out and something to note in the, the last fight you know Renegades able to control that positioning of that mega all the way in the back closer to the spawn of Rogue and because they had that position they had control of the high ground Rogue was not able to sit on that mega health pack right by the point and farm it for an EMP of their own very good plays there by Renegades as they kind of just wait it out see what they're going to be able to get out of this one they're going to have all ults there but Zachary goes in rather uh, ambitious there we'll get killed by Nico right away and now it's going to be Rogue looking to punish them as they end up losing out on Zachary and they're just going to force the control but look here you're going to have Jesus over in the back of the base and very well done here because if he decides to you know try and like go and harass the point if he decided to it could prompt a turnaround not going to happen though I think this is basically just going to be Jesus kind of just caught 
with his pants down on the enemy side of the map. Oh, here. He, he's been called out. Knox was putting a lot of bullets into him, and they were able to go back and take him out. Looked so like now he wanted to get on the point. He's yeah, like thinking I, I, about it, you know? He's like all the way on the other side of the map. His teammates know we're close. Uh, Zachary probably uses that meteor strike. Hey, if I get anything awesome, if not, I'm going to switch. So you see, he'll go over to Reaper now. A lot of vaults on the board for both teams. A full deck for Rogue. On the side of Renegades, you have everything outside of Zachary with that Death better. Blossom just because he just switched over. So it'll be when you time these sound barriers and these EMPs to really pay off for both teams. As you see, Jesus will take out Colty at the beginning of Self Destruct coming in as well from Renegades. There's Sherlocky with the EMP. But now Rogue, they're going to use that sound barrier right after that. Rogue still has that EMP, but it's going to be Unko falling, so not going to be able to use it right here. Jesus still on the prowl. They're going to have uh, Nico kind of caught upstairs, but it doesn't really matter as Renegades are just going to have to, you know, take the L here and go back, replan what they want to do. I have to say, you know, kind of kind of surprised with uh, Renegade engagements. They were fully stacked out. There was a, you know, they invested a lot into that. Uh, meanwhile, Rogue, you know, they were still able to hold on to their EMP, which is good news for them for sure. Yeah, and I think if you are Renegades, uh, this next fight, I mean, look, uh, you're going to have to try and get the EMP out of Unko. You know, if you can get Colsey to use his Primal Rage, great. Because uh, now you have Mangachu switch off of D.Va. He'll go to Zarya. So now you're going to build up towards that Graviton Surge combination with the Pulse Bomb. And you see Unko, he will use the EMP as Rogue going to push on all the way through. Renegades will lose this fight as to be expected. So Renegades will back all the way out. You know, wait to see if they can get a better push going. And they're really just... They're not getting anything. They're getting shut down right at the front door. Rogue is doing a great job here, burning down time. You know, they started off with a considerable amount. And now you're going to have this engagement from Prima Dulce there to kind of force them back into their house, perhaps. Uh, and, and this actually is, you know, Jesus, he recalls back there, but they did manage to get that, uh, get Colsey down to low health. Soon's able to take out Mangachu, and that's going to be a lot of protection that they end up losing out on again. And Renegades continue to just falter on these attacks. Rogue just doing a brilliant job, shutting them down, time in and time out. They're just waiting for an opening here. Yeah, it's just unfortunate timing there for Renegade. So they go in with an EMP and they connect on a few players of Rogue, but soon gets a pulse bomb on a Mangachu able to take him out before they can even get in. So now your Winston doesn't have that Zarya bubble as he's trying to get you know, towards that back line. Uh, now you will have Zachary getting the Death Blossom. You don't have you know, anything to kind of Yeah, you don't have a D.Va on the other side, right? Uh, or, I'm so sorry. I, I, I apologize there. They do have the D.Va, so they are going to have to be cautious about that because if he decides the Death Blossom, it is going to get absorbed by the Defense Matrix. And there we go again. Another EMP is going to drop courtesy of Rogue's Unco, and they're going to sweep right through again, bully them off of this. And this is just not looking good for Renegades. They are struggling to find anything at this point in time. I mean, they're struggling to even make it towards the choke point. I mean, they're pushed so far back into their own spawn. And it's been, you know, Unko able to get these EMPs and they play very aggressive behind them. Uh, Sherlocky will have an EMP for Renegades coming into the fight. But you have to wonder, I mean, you see AKM, he's able to control the high ground on the D.Va, not able to go there. Then the teammates putting a lot of pressure on this front. It's allowed Unko to get a lot of nice EMPs off. And now, finally, you see Renegades able to get in through the front there door. You go. It's going to be two kills there from Zachary. It's going to force Rogue to use the sound barrier as there'll be Renegades running through Rogue here, getting on the point. That was actually really well Read by Zachary because he saw that Colt that the uh, that actually Colsey was just not in the best of positions health wise, and then that Death Blossom was able to just whittle down the health so quickly. EMP is going to come out for Unko though, and now the Dragon Blade because good good news for them. Well, they were able to have that one on standby, and this is another very difficult push here for Renegades, but they're going to have to make it happen. One minute left on the clock here, less than one minute. As a matter of fact, Graviton Surge comes through, but literally no follow-up there as they are not able to take out the kills. Mangachu will fall. Losing out on that D.Va bubble will certainly hurt, and 45 seconds, you have one good push, and I just don't know if uh, Renegades have it in them. 
Well, I mean, they use the Graviton Surge there, which, I mean, they don't have any follow-up. I believe it's just Primo Dolce and Jur oh, there out too. on the point. And it's pretty unfortunate they use it because you would have gotten an EMP in this next fight and maybe have gotten a Pulse Bomb. So you could have set up something really nice if you had that Graviton Surge. And it'll be Vangachu switching off of the Zarya, now going to the Doomfish, trying to get a little bit more pressure. But it's Unko with another EMP at the gate. Sherlocky with an EMP of his own but everything going in Rogue's favor here. Well, wait a minute, they're gonna have a body on the point there, and they did manage to be able to gain a lot of ticks, so at the very least, they made progress there. Now they're just gonna have to hope, and Sherlocky, that's not gonna happen there for you, buddy, and that will be at one point and 82.5% for Renegades, and honestly, a very scattered attack there. Uh, you know, from busting out the Zarya, and, you know, and you thought you had something there, but then the Doomfist comes out, you get absolutely nothing out of that. Uh, it just feels like they're really not gelling here for some odd reason. Well, last week, I think everybody got on Renegades because, I mean, like you heard the desk talk about it, a lot of people just on Twitter read it. Like, they don't even get to the point to use the Graviton Surge last time. Now you probably think they used the Graviton Surge a little bit too early, so... It's just, uh, I know, timings of ultimates. I know really hurt Renegades here. You don't know what would have happened if they hold on to that. You know, Grav, maybe you get a Pulse Bomb. The Grav plus the EMP negates a lot of the things that Rogue would have had to work with. So I know just a mistiming of ults there. You know, potentially could be the downfall of Renegades here in map yeah. number three. I think they were also concerned maybe the Doomfist came out because they figured Colsty was going to get aggressive and then they could have punished it with the Doomfist. So then that would have been the opening that they needed and really only having to deal with uh, AKM on the D.Va. Uh, I just, I don't know, like that was just a, an unfortunate run there for Renegades. Really curious to know what the comms sounded like there because it felt like it was just not as organized as I'm sure they would have liked it to be. Well, I like Zachary's change over to Reaper because you just had AKM, uh, you know, four Rogue playing on that top position with D.Va, you know, not letting Renegades get that top, uh, you know, good, you know, high ground. And what Renegades did was they ran the Reaper because you had Colsey diving in deep just solo on the Winston. So maybe you can take advantage as he came on through. Uh, but then you just saw the EMPs and you saw, you know, the post bombs coming in from the side of Rogue. Renegades was not able to get anything going. Uh, here you'll have Zachary running, uh, you know, the Sombra for Renegades at the beginning. Rogue, they'll go with AKM on the 76. And uh, Nico will be running the Diva. We'll see if they go for that top left high ground. See if they can get AKM set up in a good spot. Oh well, man, I think you're right. They do opt to go for it, but Renegade, read it like an open book and meet them right inside of the uh, the mechanic station there. Soon, once again, you know, I, I said it in the last game in Umbani, when you need a player to be able to get a, a, a good pick, Soon is most definitely your man. Credit though, I have to say, to Renegades being able to just play back here. They're just trying to, you know, see if they can find something. But you have AKM on the high ground, does drop down, but that was just certainly being a pain in the neck to the Renegades. They tried to turtle in and see if they can hold this one off as best they could, but not gonna happen today. As this is surely looking like a rogue pickup here. You got the delay, but I don't think it's gonna matter all that much. You're too far back to be able to contest, and this is gonna be a first point. For Rogue. Yeah, no, once Rogue gets that first pick, I believe it was soon on a Primo Dolce. You don't even have to go for that high ground. You're able to take the other team's Winston out. You get right onto the point, and then I believe it was Unko able to take out Zachary. So no, you're not able to get that EMP at the beginning of the game for Renegades. So a good first fight from Rogue. They give themselves a ton of time. This is exactly the scenario they were in last week, and you saw Nico go over from the Diva to the Genji. So we'll see if they hold on to this Diva. So you see Primo Dolce yet again drops at the beginning of this fight. Oh, you could drop a fat Pulse Bomb in there and probably do a lot of damage, but ends up not getting much out of it. Does some damage, but it doesn't really secure themselves the kills. You're going to have to do it the good old-fashioned way, and that's going to be with the guns, and they do manage to get that first tick. And remember, Renegades were not able to complete this one here, so if they do manage to get it to that yellow tick, they will win this game, and they're getting ever so close. And you're going to have Nico with that self-destruct. That's going to have to force everyone to clear out here. And that's going to give him a little bit more progress. Nico trying to stay alive, but now you have yourself a Winston who jumps right in. Colsey, you know he likes to be aggressive, and they got the Transcendence out as well. So Unko looking to keep them in this fight, and they're getting so close. The second tick, yes, they're able to get the second tick. The third tick, yes, they managed to make it happen. And that's going to be the map to Rogue as they managed to secure it 2-1. to one. Brilliant work there.
from that squad. Yeah, and you saw, I believe it was Primo Dolce, go in with that Primal Rage. Rogue pretty much pulls out, except for Nico and Soon. They both stay on the point. Then they peel enough for Unko to be able to get that Transcendence. They come all the way back in. Be able to get a self-destruct on the point, cleared out, gain a little bit more time for Rogue as well. Then uh, soon connects, I believe, onto Mangachu, who switches over to the Doomfist. You saw him, like, rising up, cut right into the sky, and then just blow up the hands of a Pulse Bomb. So you see the power of Rogue there. You know, pretty much a flawless attack. So they will tank Valskaya Industries. They'll go up 2-1 in this series. And, I mean, look, even map number one, I mean, uh, if they do not get Renegades uh, speaking, if they do not get a five-man res, Mm -hmm. <laughs> talk about pretty rare. Uh, you know, they, they, they probably won't happen anymore. Well, <laughs> <laughs> very good chance that we don't very see that good. again. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, if they don't get that, I mean, you don't know what happens. I mean, Rogue could easily have taken Mountain Number One. We find ourselves in a position where they're up 3 0 in this series. All right, well, folks, we're going to get ready for game four here between Renegades and Rogue. Rogue with that victory, if they're able to make it happen. It's what I think everyone would have expected. Uh, you know, I think the only reason why people have been doubting Rogue, and, and it's a pretty big reason, was because of the results of last week. Yeah. Uh, but so far, though, you know, you got I, I give credit to Colsey fitting right into this uh, roster here, and just doing his best to, to not be uh, not not to be a detriment, just to kind of just keep them keep them focused. Well, I think you're just seeing them do a better job peeling all the way back for their supports. I mean, mm -hmm. now that fight last week, for argument's sake, right? Unko would have been dead, and he would have not have had that transcendence. And no, it's just keeping him alive for a little bit longer makes such a big difference as he's able to get the transcendence there, really kind of push Rogue over the top in that final fight. All right, folks. Well, our next map will be Watchpoint Gibraltar. And we'll see how Rogue are able to close this one out if they're able to do so. Keep in mind, just a reminder for you folks at home, maybe you're tuning into Contenders for the first time here. The way it works is that we have to determine a winner no matter what. So what that means is that if it ties two to two, we will go to a game five on Ilios, guaranteed. But if Rogue are able to secure the victory here, they will come out with a 3-1 victory, and that will be all she wrote. So the match is gonna start in it's just a four. Fit, which is odd to say because you could technically tie in four games. So yeah, it's a best of four <laughs> that then evolves into a best of five. It's like a yeah. bracket Pokemon. It's a hybrid. Yeah, it's a, it's a hybrid. It's like, we don't need that fifth map. Yeah, right? Who needs a fifth map? We haven't gone there yet, though. Which and, is kind, uh, kind of Johnny surprising. predicted that we might. He said we might. Reinforce was like, oh, Johnny, you know. But Johnny. then again, he thought, you know, four and six was a uh, odd number. Or Johnny's or predicted it. Plus He's predicted a lot of positive. things. He told Bless me <laughs> that Mayweather McGregor tonight is going to end with McGregor winning in terms of technicality on points. Sure. He's going to outbox him for all 12 rounds, and he's going to win in terms of points. You know what, man? Which is the rarest. Uh, McGregor's uh, going to win. It won't happen. No, there's no chance. <laughs> McGregor's no going to I believe it in the Irishman. I don't okay. believe it all. And I, I'm part Irish, and I don't believe in him at all. I mean, he has no chance in that matchup. <laughs> I don't so know where mean. we're going I'm here. I'm part Irish, and I just don't believe in the man. <laughs> like, no, I just, mean, that hurts. Uh, Look, there's, I'm sure McGregor will be there's very confidence, hurt by your and then there's delusional confidence. Yeah. McGregor, if you were to rate him like a Madden player, he's like a 98 in terms of delusional confidence. <laughs> so uh, now we can go back to talking about the game. As we, as uh, we should. Yeah, as we're preparing here, as uh, AKM uh. will now be running the Sombra for Rogue. So we saw Unko do it uh, the first time, uh, you know, on Volskaya. For Rogue, and on the other side of things, uh, you'll see Mangachu with the Hanzo. It looks like he's just gonna fire the Sonic Arrow, see where you know the tanks are playing for Rogue. Sometimes you have him playing in that close corner, sometimes up top. They're in that close corner. Jesus, though, he will stay on the Widowmaker for at least a little bit. He's able to take out Colsey. The power of Jesus compels you on that shot. Jesus is pretty powerful. Yeah, no, indeed, indeed he is. And he's just absolutely destroying that Zen in the back too. And that just gave Zachary free reign to push in and get the kills there. And Zachary now on the tracer, you know, Jesus has primarily played that. And I like this, they're getting very aggressive right in their face here. They want to be able to get position up top, go through the car wash. And that was a, uh, honestly, a great engagement because you're going to want Renegades here to just be able to kind of funnel them out, but you got to be cautious about a, you know, a rogue AKM coming around the corner there for Jesus. No now Jesus gonna gain vision on everybody on the map here as he's pushed all the way back to the mega health pack. The cart is still moving here as Zachary able to get two with the post bomb, takes out Colsey and DMX Nico. Zachary. Zachary making the plays here on Tracer. 
That's going to force Rogue to back all the way up. And Renegades should be able to take this first point with relative ease. So they create enough space for Jesus to make an impact. Rogue, you know, putting so much pressure trying to get towards that Widowmaker in the back lines that they let Zachary cause a ton of chaos. You know, two Pulse Bomb kills and one more with the weapon. So he's able to open things up there for Renegades as they've taken checkpoint number one. Pressure is the name of the game here, man. And you're seeing this one. Really, Renegades, they are all up in their faces, giving them no quarter whatsoever and just continued progress because you want to be able to get out of the shuttle as soon as you possibly can. You don't want anyone to be able to set up in there. Um, and I'm actually kind of shocked with how Renegades are taking the fight to Rogue like this. Yeah, but now Rogue, I mean, you do have an EMP here and you do have Transcendence. So you see them all funneling through that doorway. Don't be surprised if they pop that Transcendence, try and get all the way out here. As nice. now it's going to be the EMP that comes in, a Transcendence on the side of Renegades, and you're going to see Rogue use their Transcendence as well. So it looks like Renegades gonna back out a little bit here. Zachary landing that Pulse Bomb after the DMAC. So now we'll see Unko, he's able to pick up one as Renegades, they backed up a little bit here. Golden Boy, they're picking up the kills as yeah. Rogue has used a lot of ultimates here. You know, they used the EMP, they used the Transcendence, they're getting very close to this knock sound barrier. It's just whether they use it here or not, I mean, you don't even have Nico in mech to really kind of make this fight a little bit longer. But you had to, right? You had to put a lot into it because you're basically getting your face kicked in here and there's just nothing that you're able to do. So you gotta invest as much as you possibly can into this fight. And with Jesus now on the 76, I'm really excited to see what he's gonna be able to do here on this hero. Uh, but a lot, it just really, that was a, a very well done approach on Renegade there. Rogue finally able, you know, to get their composure together. Now let's see if they're going to be able to hold this one off. And you see the sound barrier come in, and as soon as it comes in, a perfectly timed DMP from AKM is going to negate the effects of the sound barrier. It's now going to force Renegades all the way back here. See Jesus just trying to land shots here with the 76. He's just getting He'll push as far back as he possibly can. This is and good for Rogue. This is very good for Rogue. It, they needed this. It, it's great for Rogue. And I think if you're Renegades, what really you're going to have to do is figure out a way to get Jesus to that high ground. You're going to run the 76. You've got to get him up by that hangar on that top bridge. You see, you know, they're set up for it now. They're getting towards that high ground. If I have Mangachu lead the way with the D.Va, you will get the tack visor here. Rogue, though, they do have Transcendence to get their they way through They need to force that Transcendence yes. out. That's what this push is going to be all about. Get that Transcendence, take care of it, because you don't have Nox close enough for that sound barrier. But Unko still hasn't committed to it yet. Another EMP comes in, and now Unko's going to drop the Transcendence here. So I think that was a pretty solid victory for Renegades to be able to force that out. Now you have no support ult, and then he can go ahead and do exactly as he's doing right now. Push out with that tack visor, get in their face, and just try their best to advance this payload forward. They're able to get the kill there on soon. So that's going to be a significant one because he certainly has been a pain in the neck in the back line. But of course, for Renegades, though, I mean, it was really all about getting that Transcendence out of there, which they were able to do. Well, you get the Transcendence, and then you also had that high ground position that you wanted to get Jesus on. And see Renegades making their way back towards the car here. AKM gets translocated out with Sunrise. Now it's going to be Renegades. So leading the charge push. here with their Transcendence. They take out Colsey at the beginning of this. This is their chance to complete this second checkpoint. This is their push, and they're only going to have two supports there to try and hold it off. So for Nox and Soon, they just want to see if they can try and delay this as much as they can, give their Winston the chance to re-engage, but I just don't know if that is going to come to fruition here for Rogue because they're so close to the point. But there goes your Winston. You have Colsey diving right in, but now all the members of Rogue will fall. The cap will happen. Two points on the board, and now look at that aggression. Renegades doing the same thing that they did before right in their face, giving them no space to work with. Yeah, and Rogue probably thought they were going to be able to make that fight a little bit longer because AKM uses the EMP there. You have two or three other players on the point. Like, oh, maybe we can you know, swing this in our favor. We have Soon coming off the spawn. You know, he can cause a lot of problems with Tracer. But it was Jerk not getting caught in the EMP, able to pop the sound barrier, keep everybody alive. Zachary lands a pulse bomb. That's going to force Unko to use the Transcendence here early. With that Transcendence out again, they're just constantly being a pain for Unko because they're just putting him in spots where he has to use it to stay alive. And then as soon as it drops, they kill him immediately. 
Good news for Rogue, though. With that sound barrier, that should be something that keeps them alive in this next engagement. But for Renegades, with a minute and 56 on the clock, again, it's the same thing. Bait out that sound barrier because you know Unko just used it. He doesn't have much percentage gain and take advantage of that opportunity. And here we go. The fight's going to start here. Jesus with the tack visor. Does he elect to go for it here? Pulse bomb as well. And soon, once again, is just going to do the soon things. And this is going to be Rogue. They still haven't invested that sound barrier into the fight, and they hold off Renegades for the time being. Oh, it's big for Rogue. I mean, they control the high ground. You see it was Colsey and Nico at the beginning of that fight. You know, Nico drops down a cart with Matrix. He kind of protects everybody else. Colsey jumps to the back line, has the Primal Rage. You're able to get rid of Sherlocky right away. And at that point, I mean, Jesus, where do you go with the attack visor? I mean, you have Diva flying at you with Matrix. You have no high ground control. There's nothing you can do. Now at the beginning of this fight, so you had both tanks or renegades try and get up to that high ground. You'll know, gain themselves some good map positioning, but you know, that allows the road to get into the back line. You'll know, put a little bit more pressure on the supports. The self-destruct comes in here for Mangachu, and here's going to be Rogue using the, self, uh, the sound barrier here, and it's going to be a self-destruct coming in as well. As now you'll see Rogue get back on the quark. You will have the, the primal rate coming in as well. But here's a big transcendence coming in from Unko. And he he'll is trying to lead the way. It. It'll be AKM with the attack visor as well. He will get nothing out of that attack visor. He held on to it for a while. But that transcendence just counters the attack visor in that case. I'm sure he would have liked to have seen that transcendence go down earlier. But they did manage to have both of those support ultimates there. Now as they try and get ready and try and re-engage again. They only have 18 seconds to work with here x and rogue they have managed to win this fight on the point it, they bust out the reinhardt because they think hey we're gonna go with the shields but guess what primo you're just gonna get dived on and die immediately and the zachary make a play here no i i just don't think that's gonna be the case unless he's able to delay it out which is really their only chance here and he just gets absolutely melted like delicious butter and that is gonna do it that will be rogue holding it down well done by them you saw Primo at the ultra there, switch over to the Reinhardt. Immediately, you had Colsey jump right on top of him. A Discord orb hit him, and then hit, and I know, Colsey and Soon just dealt with him so quick. I mean, as soon as we saw him come up and put his shield up, he had like one bar of health That's left. That's how I you feel when I like, play ranked. I like come out with my Reinhardt. I'm like, all right, guys, get beyond. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> There's just nothing more you could do. That was a tough round, uh, or tough, I should say, uh, third point attempt for renegades but let's not forget how well they were able to play on the first and second right yes a really forced rogue back and that brought out a lot out of rogue and a lot of coordination it was absolutely necessary in order for them to be able to hold that one off the way it started because it was not pretty yeah and i think if you're renegades you switch over to the rhine there i know obviously you get that shield that jesus who was on the 76 there could have hid behind if you're not able to force your way into that high ground you know get him up on top of that bridge over by that mega health back to the right. Now your best bet, probably go with Reinhardt. Let them just stand behind the shield. If they dive on the Reinhardt, now you're able to swing the hammer. Now put down a ton of damage, but it's just a Discord Orb soon coming in with the Tracer. Colsey, right away, they notice it. They jumped right on him. Did not give them any chance to make something happen there. Now Rogue now will go on offense. A chance to close this series out, Golden Boy. As you will have Nico staying on the diva as and we have I, I was actually really impressed with his genji play last week yeah, but i think I, I think this team has just realized how important the diva is for their team's success and i think uh, you look at some of the stats from last week you know in terms of like fights and whatnot when he was playing the diva they were extremely effective they won most of the fights when he was the diva for this team as opposed to akm so i think it was a logical choice coming into this week to make him play the diva i do agree with that because, you know, and for a team that just doesn't wa really want to play D.Va all that much, hey, man, you know, in this meta and in, in its current state, you certainly got to make it happen. But by the way, triple DPS on defense for Renegades here. So Primo Duce is going to be uh, a player to look out for because if he dies out early, that's certainly going to hurt. Or if you end up losing your Tracer, he's going to try and get into the back line and harass. And you lose that out early, that's definitely going to hurt. And it's all about winning this corner as quickly as you possibly can if you're a rogue. And that is exactly what they managed to do here is they make their way down below into what's been called the car wash uh, because of the position there, the underpass, so to speak. And this is a great attack from Rogue, exactly what they wanted. Get in their face quickly, and don't let up.
Yeah, and you had Jesus die so early in the fight. Now you're gonna lose some of your members when you're halfway you know, for Rogue pushing the card underneath the bridge. So this is not looking good for Renegade. It says you may be able to get Jesus back towards the payload here. A few members coming off the spawn here as Mangachu switches off of the Genji to the Diva. So you're gonna see him just trying to get on the card here. He gets hit with a Discord right away. You see the pressure they're putting on Mangachu, want to get him D-mech, but it's soon taken out Sherlocky at the beginning of the fight. Able to deal with one of the supports and you D-mech the D.Va. You, you have attack are coming in from Zachary, but you see there Nico flying right at him with that Defense matrix. Oh, the desperation hold yeah. there for Renegades. They had to engage on it, or they gave up a point. You know, one could say, or, or you just hold back because you really didn't have the upper hand in that push. I mean, sure, you did have Primal Duce with it, but you had, I, I don't know, you just didn't really have much to work with there, especially considering that you ended up losing Mangachu so early in that fight. But could you ask for a better start of a fight for Rogue? You had Soon taking out Sherlocky, who's one of your supports and you're able to D-Mech Mangachu on the D.Va. So you had a great start to the fight. Here's gonna be a transcendence early from Unko. It will keep his teammates alive in the back. You had AKM up on top of the hangar, used the TAC visor, putting down a ton of damage. A self-destruct coming in as well. As they pushed all the way back. Primo Dolce though able to take out soon. It's gonna be Renegades using a sound barrier as well, but you see the disengage coming in they from Rogue. They know it's a fight. They cannot win at this moment. They need soon to come off the spot. Yeah, they, they well, not only that too, it's just, they used that sound barrier out of desperation so that this way they weren't going to get dived on and get absolutely destroyed because if they lost that fight that certainly would have hurt so it was just a good uh good opportunity for jurors just to be like hey screw it i need to go ahead and use this or else this is it and uh they were able to hold them back for the time being here and rogue they can take and take their time they have less than four minutes that is plenty of time to work with here. The only thing is they can't get too overzealous because you've seen it happen before. You have a lot of time to work with and you just can't close it out. Yeah, and it was Mangachu who was able to take out Kulsi at the beginning of the fight and we don't catch it there, but Soon is actually trapped underneath this little area here and it was Renegades who was able to take him out right away. Now That's Renegades good. pushing all the way through Sherlocky uses a Transcendence. You're going to get Primo Dolce using a Primal Rage. So there'll be another win here for team fight in terms of renegades, you do hold on to the tack visor. You do end up using a transcendence there. So yeah. now you'll Where have rogue stopped? with a transcendence of their the own. Letter. You do we have rogue though who invested a sound barrier into that one. So we'll see what they decide to use. Maybe you engage with the transcendence here for rogue. Well, they haven't seen AKM. You know, uh, well, they, they haven't seen AKM use the TAC visor, so I'm sure that they're anticipating this, and they don't have anything to deal with it. Jur with the sound barrier if he's able to get this one in time, but they're just going to push him all the way back and keep one body on the payload there. And let's see here how Rogue are going to play this because here comes the TAC visor, and this is just going to be a D.Va just, or excuse me, a Tracer trapped in the back, gets no kills for it, but forces people away as the payload is going to get right back into possession. Contesting here for Renegades as they know exactly what it takes to be able to hold this one here. They did it to Rogue in that last round. Kolsky gets the kill on Primo Dulce, and that is going to be a Winston gone, and that is a, a, a big body that you end up losing there, and the payload is so close to being able to get cap. Can Rogue make this one happen here? Is they're going to have that baby diva try and stall it out as long as they can? Well, that's Primo Dulce back at it again, and I don't know, man. I mean, here we go. Renegades are looking to get right back in their face. They do manage to use that self-destruct to try and zone them out now, and there goes the Transcendence. This could be a fight that, Rogue can, uh, that Renegades can win. And it's a huge kill by Jesus there at the beginning of that because Nox has his sound barrier, so you're able to take out Nox. They don't have the sound barrier Rogue invest there. Zachary comes in with a tag visor. He's able to make an impact. Renegades, though, you know, your short arm support alts coming into this one. Rogue will have a sound barrier. They will have a tack visor, and you will also have a pulse bomb. So a lot of alts for Rogue to work with. And I think sure, Renegades, I you know, noise. the last time they gave up the high ground to Rogue. It's going to be on soon, though. If he can make a play with the pulse bomb coming from behind, getting very close to it. There is going to be the sound barrier. Jesus takes out Unko at the beginning, so a support dropping right away here for Rogue. And soon still hasn't uh, used that pulse bomb yet. I actually thought he was going to use it to dive the back line and take out one of the supports here. They end up not getting much for it. But the good news, the good news for Renegades, Nox used the sound barrier and that is going to be one less support ult that they have in this one 
So let's see seconds. what Soon's gonna do, because they know Soon is continuing to linger around here, and he's trying to get as much information as he can. Maybe a drop down pulse, but oh, it's gonna land right in front of him. Does he manage to find it? No, he does not. So the pulse bomb isn't gonna really bring all that much value out of them at all, but they're still gonna have Soon on the high ground harassing. I guess he's trying to go for the one flip there on the 76, because that could be a considerable pickup as well. And I think Soon is looking for anything that he can find. And in that exchange, Jesus was able to get that pulse bomb off. Yeah, it was Jesus yet again able to take out Nox at the beginning of the fight, so no rogue. And last week, they were not able to keep their supports alive, and when they're backline, Jesus caused them a lot of problems for their supports hard. yet again, as Unko does have a transcendence. Jur, though, on the other side for Renegades, does have a sound barrier, and you're gonna have Zachary and AKM both with tack visors. Here comes the push from Rose. AKM, tack visor in hand. Does he go to use it? You're gonna also have the transcendence invested into it. It's do or die time now. You need to make it happen, but the transcendence is gonna stop that right in its tracks. And there goes that self-destruct to try and zone them out. Zachary's able to take out Nico here, but it will be Rogue's time as they're able to clear out kills, taking out Mangachu and taking out Primo Dulce. The tanks are gone and a desperation last second play there by Rogue. And that will get them the point, but they put all their eggs into that basket there. And that was certainly a difficult fight on both sides. It's a fantastic defense by Renegades though. They're able to waste a lot of the clock. You see that golden box that you need to get to. Less than four minutes. Uh, uh, they have around four minutes, Rogue, yeah. in, in the shuttle. That just shows you how difficult it is to get out of that phase when you're able to get that high ground. It's very tough. And right now, you have Soon with the Pulse Bomb. Can he take somebody out early at the beginning of this fight? You see, he's trying to just find the prime target here. His teammates going to back up. Primo Dolce does use the Primal Rage, just trying to knock players back here. Cause chaos for Renegades. So we're down to underneath a minute for Rogue. Their payload is so close to completing the map. But you're gonna have members of Renegade stacking on top. There goes the sound barrier. Maybe that's the opportunity they were looking for though, but he, oh, he's gotta go in there and be able to get the kills there on the tracer on top of the supports. They're so close to being able to make this one happen. Two minutes or two meters there right next to it and they managed to make it happen. And that was a very tough game on both sides, but Rogue on top of this one and they close it out three to one and you saw there right you had soon go aggressive onto the supports and they couldn't get in uh, you know they couldn't like manage to regroup with their team force them out of it and then from there they were just able to pick them off little by little very well done yeah and zachary for renegades had positioning on top of that high ground but you now nico on the diva just runs right at him you see the discord orb coming in from unko there just gets him weak, and there you see at the top left of uh, you know, your screen, you see Nico go right up to the top. You, know, you get the defense matrix right in his face. He's not able to make any impact in that last fight. Uh, Rogue looking uh, better than they did last week. Don't want to say back to like their top form, but also, I mean, you did not have wins, so a little bit of a different lineup this week, as I know he's at another event. Yep. So you get Colsey in the lineup, who played quite well. Uh, filling well. in. I think the biggest difference for me with Rogue is that you saw them commit to the Diva play all series long. And yeah, well, Rogue were able to come out on top as they close this one out three to one. But Renegades did not make it easy. No siree. They challenged them at every corner. Let's go ahead, though, and send it back over to the desk to break it all down. Puckett, over to you.